people tend to think Jeeves was Bertie Wooster's butler, but actually he was his V-A-L-E-T. Now, is that word valet or valet? It looks like it's valet. So if I had a car, which I don't, and I wanted it cleaned, which is pretty unlikely, and I wanted someone else to do it, which is very likely indeed, I suppose I would take it to be valeted, and I would sound like an insufferable sued to talk about getting it valeted. But it's a French word, and is pronounced by them, valet. So hotels offer a valet service, and I would sound ignorant to call it a valet service. But, as it happens, Bertie Wooster himself and anyone else from the time or class where they might conceivably employ a gentleman's gentleman would call him a valet. And if I called him a valet to them, I'd sound ignorant and worse, pretentious for my unnecessarily Frenchifying. They'd probably call me, ironically, a parvenu. But lots of people pronounce it valet. So if I pronounce it valet to them, they might think I didn't know any better. And if I explain to them, as I'm doing to you now, that I do know better, and that employers of valet say valet, they might think I'm claiming to be such a person, which I'm not, because I'm not. You see the problem? I don't want to be judged, or to judge, or to appear to be judging. If you call the room you lounge in a lounge, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do, and I call it a living room, I don't want that to seem like an implied rebuke to you. On the other hand, it seems patronising for me to start calling it a lounge just because you do. So what do I do? It's the same old secret rules and codes that the English have been using to distinguish one another and trip one another up since the Norman Conquest. Pudding, sweet or dessert. Sofa or settee. But now with an added twist. Because at least Hyacinth Bouquet knew what she was aiming at. If your heart's desire is to be mistakenly taken as posher than you really are, at least you can research that. You can read Nancy Mitford, go on wine courses, get elocution lessons, and, well, you'll still get it wrong because the upper classes have made it their chief leisure activity to build linguistic man-traps for people like you for hundreds of years, but at least you can try. But I don't want to be thought of as faux posh, or indeed as faux working class. I'm aspiring after something far harder to capture. Faux me. What did I used to do and say before I knew what was right and what was wrong? I don't want to be inauthentic, but I can no longer remember what I authentically said. I'm searching for the most honest way to be fake, because that's all I have left thanks to my years of relentless self-scrutiny. Maybe on balance the easiest thing is to pretend I think Jeeves was a butler too.